Thank you so much, Guandian. I think this report is super exciting, showcasing the brightest and most disruptive innovators around the world. If you missed it, we did pop the link in the chat for anyone that was looking to download it and get the full scope of the insights, but you can also find it on the PatSnap website um, as well as in the resource section uh, for your perusal. As promised, we will now pick our winner from the previous session. So my drum roll is Alex Red. Congratulations, you are the winner of our final giveaway. Without further ado, we are walking into our final session of the day, um, which will be conducting impactful research for the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. And we have the honor of gaining insights from a distinguished expert, Mr. Marvin Chung. As we stand on the cusp of a new decade, the significance of aligning our efforts with global sustainability goals cannot be overstated. The 2030 goals serve as a blueprint for addressing some of the most pressing challenges facing our world today, from climate action to poverty alleviation and beyond. Marvin, with his wealth of knowledge and commitment to sustainable development, is here to guide us through the intricacies of conducting impactful research that contributes meaningfully to these goals. It's not just a session, it's a call to action for each of us to be catalysts of positive change through all of our research endeavors. Without further ado, let's turn our attention to Marvin, and I hope you enjoy our last session. Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to be here today at PATSNAV's 2023 annual innovation conference frontier to talk about what can systems research teach us about conducting impactful research for the 2030 sustainable development goals. About me, I currently chair the Global Consortium for Systems Research and co-direct the Center for Global Agenda at Unveil Labs. I am also a UNESCO Inclusive Policy Lab expert on SDGs and strategic planning, as well as a Global Diplomacy Fellow at the United Nations Institute for Training and Research. My colleagues told me to keep this friendly, so you will find a picture of my puppy Frederick at the bottom of each slide. The contents of today's slides are also available on our website together with a more detailed conference paper at unbuildlabs.com slash conducting impactful research for the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Reaching the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals is challenging. If the solutions were simple or obvious, we would have reached the goals already. As researchers, we understand the value of seeing around corners. System research teach us how to step back, better navigate complex adaptive systems, and create options. This 10-minute presentation assumes no prior knowledge in systems research. It will introduce four theories, including one, what is systems research, two, properties of complex adaptive systems, three, properties of grand challenges, and four, common elements of systems thinking. To demonstrate systems research practical applications, I'll present three short case studies interspersed between the theory slides. I'll start with a case study that is fairly relatable to the audience, the startup ecosystem, then move on to examine system-wide transformation research and climate action policy research. I want to begin with this fundamental question, what is systems research? First, what is a system? A system is a collection of parts that interact to form a whole, whose characteristics depend both on the characteristics of the parts and their interconnections. I like to think about systems in a hands-on way. If you open and close your palm, you have the parts, your fingertips, the interconnections, your muscles and bones, and you have the whole, your hand. Individually, they're not that useful, but together they make quite a useful system. There are many types of systems, but we tend to refer to a specific type of system when we think about the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. They're called Complex Adaptive Systems, CAS. CAS are complex. Complexity lies at the edge of chaos. There is insufficient agreement and certainty, but not to the extent they're completely random or chaotic. We can still perceive patterns in real life despite some complexity. For example, I would not expect a cup in my hand to become lighter if I spill what's inside. CAS are also adaptive in the sense they respond to input. If I cut my finger from a sharp piece of glass, I will pull my hand back. I want to offer an intuitive working definition of systems research in two sentences. First, we are surrounded by a lot of systems. Think education system, political system, legal system, climate system. And two, at a basic level, systems research looks at these systems and asks, what are the commonalities among these systems and how can we make them better? And to be more specific, systems research involves either one, doing generalizable research into the nature of complex adaptive systems, such as their properties, or two, apply systems thinking to research. I'll elaborate on systems thinking in a later slide. The framework global, regional, country, state, city, community is very helpful. 
when thinking through systems. One of the systems perspective into the startup ecosystem made look at how parts at different scales come together from global to community or community to global. Some communities such as Silicon Valley can have more influence in the global startup landscape than certain countries. Therefore, it is important to recognize that influence is not only exerted in one direction from top down, but also from global, uh, it could also be in multiple directions. You could take any angle, for example, law, economics, sociology, or psychology to clarify the relationships between these parts. Of course, we know more about CAS than just ideas on complexity and adaptiveness. To date, there are 12 properties we know about CAS because of time constraints. I'll only briefly describe a few of them. We will move directly into the examples and look at how they can be applied to research. So property three, for example, path dependency, system history, influences current behavior and future events, or in basic terms, no redos. Property four, feedback loops, continuous feedback can either amplify or diminish the effects of an event. Property 12, systems of systems, CAS are characterized by decentralized distributed network compositions of diverse and semi-autonomous parts. This includes property 12A, operationally independent parts. The parts within the system fulfill purposes of their own and continue to operate for those purposes even when moved from the overall system. And property 12B, managerially independent parts. The parts within the system are not managed only for the purposes of the overall systems. You'll find the detailed definitions and sources on our website. Let's look at how we might apply properties of CAS to research. I tend to use these properties as a checklist. Here, I'm going to talk about common errors I've seen in systems change and system-wide transformation research. Common error one, insufficient awareness of the limitations of the publications and recommendations. CAS are dynamic, property nine, and interventions are context-dependent. Think property one, starting condition dependency, and property three, path dependency. There has to be an awareness that the world is rapidly changing. This is commonly acknowledged in private sector, but less so by academics. What assumptions underlie recommendations? When thinking about assumptions from a systems perspective, it is helpful to think not just within the scope of our study, but also about assumptions at global, regional, country, state, city, community levels. In common era two, insufficient awareness of the system of systems approach. A system of systems approach is necessary when navigating a system with managerially and operationally independent parts. This has two main implications. First, researchers are often writing to an audience with priorities that are different to their own. It is therefore important to write to persuade, make a case for why a change is desirable to the target audience, not just to offer imperatives. Second, although it is helpful to isolate certain systems, it is important to be aware of and be able to capture the effects of feedback loops. For example, how will a cultural intervention affect the global financial system? How might we design grassroots cultural interventions to activate sustainable development at a country or even regional level? You might see at this point, systems sound kind of interesting. How might we do better? How can I apply this to research for the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals specifically? So the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals are actually a type of particularly challenging problems known as grand challenges. Its properties include one, global scope, two, high significance, three, potential to be solvable, and four, wickedness. I'd like to take a moment to appreciate the phrase potential to be solvable, because that is the important part, right? That our work could solve this very difficult challenge. I like this quote from Churchman in 1968. In principle, we have the technological capability of adequately feeding, sheltering, and clothing every inhabitant of the world, of providing adequate medical care for every inhabitant of the world, and of providing sufficient education for every inhabitant of the world. So why are we not further along? Well, the idea of wickedness from Wicked Problems by design theorists and urban design professors Richard Weber in 1973 offers some insight. They observed 10 properties of wicked problems, some of which arise directly from properties of CAS, and I've made these connections explicit in the descriptions on our website. On the next slide, I'll look at research strategies to address areas where I often see research agendas fall short. This includes property one, no definitive formulation. There are many theories on the cause and urgency of a wicked problem, and the framing determines the preferred intervention. Property eight, every wicked problem is a symptom of another problem. The level at which a problem is considered solved depends on the judgment and perspective of the solver. Property nine, conflicting theories. There are conflicting theories, but insufficient evidence as a result of wicked problems uniqueness. This figure describes how a line of inquiry can be structured to take properties of grand challenges into account. To offer an example of how the structure can be applied, here's a case study built around clients, this changes everything, capitalism versus the climate from 2014. 
So at a philosophical or theoretical level, Klein observed that for decades, regular people have been asked to turn off their lights, put on sweaters, and pay premium prices for non-toxic cleaning products and renewable energy, and then watched as the biggest polluters have been allowed to expand their emissions without penalty. At this level, we might ask, to what extent has the lack of fairness slowed progress? At a research question level, Klein referenced the quote, when local people own the wind farms and share in the benefits, they will support them. It won't be NIMBY, not in my backyard. It'll be pool, please on our land. Is this claim true? This is something we can test. We can find out, we can research. At a secondary research question level, we can look at actions. What interventions are necessary to increase fairness? Would we benefit from new technologies? What interventions already exist? Depending on the findings at each level, researchers can open new lines of inquiries, reject hypotheses in real time, and build onto previous findings. This is a quick graphic to help us conceptualize complexity in collaborative research under this framework. I want to end the presentation with the common elements of contemporary systems thinking, elements common across hard, soft, and critical system thinking, and methods people have found effective to understand systems. Systems thinking frames a phenomenon as a system by applying systems theories and concepts to predict behaviors and support analysis of potential actions for improvement. As with previous properties, the definitions and descriptions are available on our webpage. I'd like to call out element one, recognizing interconnections. This is the foundation to systems thinking. It involves identifying key connections between the deeply interwoven parts and holes within a system. Every link may be considered a missing link within the complexly interwoven web, and all of the steps have to be taken. One cannot simply leave a step out in the process of recognizing interconnections. This means good systems research will take time and resources. Element eight, understanding systems at different scales. Vera Richmond in 1994 described this as keeping one eye on the forest and the other eye on the trees. It is important to recognize different scale of systems and system of systems. Element nine, understanding goals, priorities, and inter intentions. Cows are intentional. They adapt towards some ends depending on its values and priorities, including survival. I hope these theories and applications will inspire impactful new lines of inquiry in your research for the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you for having me today. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marvin. I think we can all resonate with the content you've shared as you bring new perspectives to truly conducting impactful research. Thank you again. And with that, we are drawing the curtains on an enriching day of exploration, learning, and innovation at Frontier 2023. And I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for being an integral part of this experience. From the insightful sessions with our distinguished speakers, the exciting launches, to the engaging discussions in the chat, today has been a true celebration of ideas, collaboration, and the boundless possibilities that innovation presents. I encourage you to continue the conversation, explore new ideas, and embrace the true spirit of innovation in all that you do. On behalf of the entire PatSnap team, thank you for making this day a resounding success, and here's to a future filled with innovation, collaboration, and the continuous pursuit of knowledge. Wishing you a wonderful evening, and looking forward to connecting with each and every one of you, hopefully in the near future, or maybe at Frontier 2024. Have a good night. <laughs>